All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, you know what? Thank you for coming. Before I get started, I do just want everybody to take note and see our new recruits for our as for our firefighters. Yeah. And yeah. Thank you. They sure look good standing there. Wow, thank you all. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna thank everybody for coming today because I wanted, to, I wanted you all, I wanted you all to come here today because there's been a lot of back and forth uh, in the press about what I knew and when I knew it concerning the water credits and I really wanted to set that record straight. There was a press release there was a press release sent by the state on January 24th. At the very end, it stated that the credits would continue to be provided through the end of February. That was something we knew. We already knew that. That wasn't new information for us. In fact, we expected the credits to continue through the end of March. Then, two weeks later, not two months later, two weeks later, in the, in the letter the governor's office sent to David Sabuda and I, which was dated January 7th, it said that the credits and the GLEWA, the Great Lakes Water Authority payment, would be provided through the end of February. It also states, and that's when it said through the end, it also states that the letter is the first formal notification regarding the credits ending through the end of February. That's what it says. And if you want to see it, it's available. Again, this didn't strike me as anything new. We were expecting the credits to continue through the end of March, and state law supports that. And I am going to have our chief legal officer, Angela Wheeler, talk more about that in just a few moments. But that's what the law supports. So really, I thought these credits should be provided at least through June. That's when we have our next testing round, in June. And after we get the results of the next water testing round, we could have the conversation about when the credits would end. But what concerns me is that we're losing focus. We're losing focus of the real issue, and that's what the state wants us to do, not hold them accountable. You know, now we're arguing amongst ourselves. That's what we're doing. We're arguing amongst ourselves instead of being upset that with the state for ending the credits earlier than they initially told us. And after I told them when I got the letter, I told them then, this is not a good idea. I said that right in the conference room, this is not a good idea. And the fact is the governor, the governor signed legislation at the beginning of January extending those credits through March 31st. Now that's what he did. So I have not led this, misled this community and I was shocked to hear Flint City Council President Kerry Nelson say that I misled this community. I take exception to that. I would not do that, and I think we deserve the credits until the water is tap drinkable without a filter. In fact, you want me to say it again? Tap drinkable without a filter? Tap drinkable without a filter. And, and, and you know what? And this was in a meeting. We've been meeting. We've been having meetings about this. And this was in a meeting where the governor's chief advisor, Rich Baird, used the phrase. We asked, what does good water mean? Because we want it more than just what the federal standards are requiring. We know we meet those when they test the water. We want it more. We want it tap drinkable without a filter. And when that was said, I said, ooh, I like that. I like that phrase. I'm going to start using it, tap drinkable without a filter. So this is a trust issue. That's what it is. State officials say one thing and then do another, and that's always been one of my concerns and that of the community as well. So let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. Let's hold the state accountable for what we deserve. Remember, 
state officials told us they would provide the water credits and the payment for source water through March 31st. And this is reflected in the minutes of the meeting that I'm talking about. We had, we had this meeting with city officials, state officials, we had county people there, EPA, we had about 25 people in person and or on the phone with a conference call. That's what we had. And I, as I mentioned before, this is supported by state law. And with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Angela Wheeler, our chief legal. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. Yeah, when the state um, enacted Public Act uh, 340 of 2016, this is Senate Bill um, 800, in Section 602, it gave the state treasurer power to provide residential customers the water credits up to 65% when there is a water um, emergency that's declared. And under Section 4A, the state has the power to extend the credits uh, for the amount billed for water for the period of April 2014 to no later than March 31st of 2017, which the mayor has um, previously stated. So the credits can be extended um, by the state um, within their discretion um, through March 31st of 2017. And there is a specific appropriation um, for this money um, um, through, the, um, through the public act. And you know what, I have to come back because I was told that I get, I said January 7th when I should have said February, February 7th, let me get it right, but it's on the letter, the correct date is on the letter. And so that's what I wanna let people know. We don't have time to fuss and fight with each other. We need to fuss and fight with them. You know, they should have extended the credits. That's what we talked about. That's all we ever talked about. So getting through February was something we expected. Not only do, do we expect that, we deserve that. We expect it through March. We expect it at least through March. And so um, that's where we are. I hope we can continue to stay united and focused and hold the state accountable and get what we have been fighting for and what we deserve because that's what I'm going to continue to do. Uh, Kristen? Right here. Oh. Now? Well, you know, we can only do what we can do, but we're going to continue to keep fighting for what we believe and know that we deserve. Obviously, I can't. They said they were going to extend them through March 31st, and then they changed what they said. And, you know, uh, the, what we've talked about, even with the other things we've been doing, uh, when we talk about this issue of trust, uh, that was why we had to have so many other players at the table when we were doing testing because we wanted to make sure we were holding them accountable and that we trusted the results we were getting from them. So I can, I can show you what's, what they've said, uh, and we have to do that together. That's what we have to do. I don't know what they'll do, obviously, because they changed what they said we were able to do and what they were going to do. How is the city going to cover the source water if the state stops paying for that the monthly bill? Wow, I w you know, I, I really wish I had... Uh, Dave Sabuda here to answer that question, but that's something that we've been talking about and why should we have to? Why should we have to? I'm going to continue to try to hold them to what they said and I'm gonna to try to, con and I'm going to continue to try to get the extensions. Like I said, I wish they'd go through at least, well, if I had my way, they'd go through more than just June. They'd go through much more than June because one of the things we know is while the water tests a certain way and we're glad that the water is testing where it is. We're glad that our people have been doing what's necessary to get the water quality better, but we, I think Jolisa explained it last week when we had a press conference. The infrastructure the, in, in people's homes has been ruined. We can't use, it's not safe when you look at those kinds of issues. We're removing lead service lines and we're shaking things. So we've got to use filters because of an action that was done to us by them. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Is the city a party to those discussions, and where are we at? I think we, we, we may have had some representation. We know we still need bottled water. If we have to use filters, we still need bottled water as well. And uh, people need to let them know that we need bottled water. You have to go out there and get it and show there's a need for bottled water. And so we want these kinds of supports to be in place until we have gotten to where we talked about getting. Tap drinkable. Have they, have, are they talking about a specific target date? Or are they looking at sometime this year? Or what are they talking about? Well, I think they've been talking about through maybe September. But you know, better get something in writing. Yeah. Mayor Reed. Dr. Laura Sullivan had made the statements at, in the Flint City Council meeting regarding the testing. And uh, it's one round of testing that's done, and it's supposed to be another round of testing that's to be done to uh, somewhat assure that the water is getting to where it is, and that the state of uh, Michigan has not met that burden yet before they turned off or cut off the, uh, uh, the credit. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts about that or, uh, you know, I know she's not here. I, I know she's not here, but you know what? I, and that was why I said, and I never finished. And if I had my way, I'd have the, ex the, the credits extended for years to come. We have kids and families that have been impacted for years to come. But I would like to at least get through that next round of testing because that's what she was talking about and that's what's supposed to happen in June and then see where we are. But, that, but that's why I said, February, yeah, we expect it to go through February. We expect it to go through March, but we, our goal, what we really would like is to at least get to the next round of testing. Also, your credibility has been somewhat uh, put to task by the leadership of the Flint City Council. And while on my show uh, on Saturday, a uh, council person that sits on the Flint City Council said uh, that what uh, the leadership, Mr. Uh, Nelson said was not accurate that in fact that the Flint City Council has been uh, knew about and been kept abreast of what was going on about the uh, credits and this whole issue. Uh, what say you? Well, what I will say is, I mean, you can look at their minutes as well because I think uh, our, our chief financial officer presented that information. But as soon as I got the formal letter that was dated February 7th, I shared it the very next day with uh, Council President uh, Nelson and with uh, our senior council person, Scott Kincaid. I gave it to him the very next day as I had uh, Kristen put the letter out to the media. Have you been in contact with Governor Snyder or have you talked to Senator Hanenek or your representative? Neely, I'm going to have up. conversation with them. I, have, I haven't talked to the governor since I went down to meet with him to ask him about extending them. I have had no further discussion with him since then. Um, I know Mayor Reed, you said that the um, credits should be in place until um, the water is tapped drinkable without a filter. Have you communicated um, any timeline to the governor in terms of your expectations about that? Well, how long is that going to take? It's going to take us getting through replacing these lead service lines. We know that's at least three years. We know that. Uh, you know, that's as fast as we can get them done. So we know it goes through that amount of time. And um, yeah, we've, we've put all kinds of things on the table. Uh, but I knew we had the law on our side as far as the 31st because we knew that had been signed off on. And we still talked about this next round of testing in June. But I would like it to go, I mean, we're going to be shaking things up while we make things better. You know, um, you have to do that. And so it would have been nice uh, to continue the conversation. That's what we thought. We were still continuing conversations around negotiating this time frame and pushing it back. So we have had that discussion, yes. But I will have something to say about that. But we've talked about those kinds of things as well and had this been a different community, what would have happened and what should have happened. But I will put something out for that. Mayor, since the law is on your side, will you take the governor at task or court? You said the law is on your side. Maybe that should be go to refer that to the chief. Would you consider uh, taking the governor to court to make him obey 
of the statute. I think we have to consider all possibilities. I don't think anything's off the table. Um, so we do have to keep all options open. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, come on, Chief Public Health Advisor, Dr. Pugh. One of the things that, that uh, Dr. Mayor Weaver mentioned when I first got here is having an environmental justice summit. And so we've been thinking about this since October, and so we've put together an environmental justice summit that will take place on March 9th and March 10th, where some of the lead experts throughout the country, as well as some local folks here, will be helping this community look at this issue as an environmental justice issue. So that information will be coming out this week. Okay, this week that we come out? It will be okay, coming good. out, yes. Okay. So how will the public be invited to that? Will they be able to speak? Yes, as part of it on, on March 9th, we will be having a listening session where we will be listening to the public. And when would you, when would, do you expect to be responding to the Michigan Civil Rights Commission report? When and how? When should we put something out? I don't know yet. It will be coming out soon. And, and she's be been thinking soon. about this, so right. it will it'll be coming out with the March 9th. I've been so focused on oh, this. Yeah. Right. Your response to that will come out with yeah. the announcement of that. Yeah. Right. And with that's that coming this week. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you guys.